This is part three and the final part on invoicing. Uh, I'm assuming you've seen part one and part two in that order. Uh, in part two, we look at what happens if we want to pay the invoice in full as we pay in the two different discount periods and we pay outside of the discount period, which is the credit period. Now we will be looking at what happens if we make partial payments during this time. So I'm going to use exactly the same example we've used before and we will uh, be following it through. I'll just be making some amounts up as I go along so you can try this on your calculator. This is really the, the point where um, the rubber hits the road, if you like, where you really will know if you know this stuff or not. So try as many examples as you can. Try exercise 4.2. Try exercise 4A, which is at the end of the chapter, the appendix. And try the last few questions that were on assignment 1 that you did not hand in. All right. Let's uh, try this and let's say, what if, uh, first of all, a payment is made somewhere in the first discount period, uh, let's assume they make the payment on November the 1st. So on November the 1st, it could be a bookkeeper or someone in the company alerts us and says, we better make a payment now because this is the end of the first discount period or very close to it. And we say, okay, uh, how much do we owe? We owe twenty-seven fifty. dollars uh, How much can we afford to send them? Well, we've got $1,500 now we could reasonably afford to pay off on our debt. So we will send in $1,500. Now remember, any amount that you send in with cash or check or any other means is a net amount. So we will send in $1,500, that's net. We are in the first discount period, which was a 2% discount. And we want to know how much we get credited for, which is the amount that appears on the invoice, which is a list amount. So now we're trying to solve for list. Formula, always the same. Net is list. One minus the discount. Net is 1500 and that is the list, which is what we're trying to find out. One minus a 2% discount is 0.98. So we get rid of the 0.98 by dividing both sides by 0.98. Now notice that's different from what happened on the last little clip that you probably saw, part two. So we have 1500 divided by 0.98, which is... 153061. So we are going to get credited with 153061 on that day, even though we just sent in $1,500. So we get uh, credited with 153061. Now we owe the difference between the original balance 2750 and the 153061. Do that on your calculator to make sure I'm not making a mistake if for no other reason. And I'm getting 12.19.39. Now I have a real issue now with the um, space on this whiteboard, uh, but I'll try and pursue this for you uh, as well as I can. Now we owe now 12.19.39. We now would, we have to pay that off at some point. So the bookkeeper might alert us on November the 12th or somewhere around then and said, this is now the end of the last discount period, the last time we can get a discount, so we better send some money in. So let's say we're making a payment on November the 12th. Now remember, we still owe 12 dollars So on November the 12th, we say, okay, how much money can we afford to send in? And they say, well, let's send in $1,000. Let's try and almost pay it off. So if we're sending in $1,000, that's net. The last discount period is uh, 0 0.015. We want to know what we'll get credited with. That is a list amount. Same as before, NAT is list. One minus discount. So we have uh, the NAT is $1,000. That's how much we sent in. Is equal to the list, which we will get credited for. One minus 0 0.015 is 0.985. Divide both sides by 0.985 to clear that out. So we've got 1,000 divided by 0.985 and we will get credited with 10.15.23. So we're going to get credited here with a list, uh, sorry, yeah, with a list amount of 10.15.23. 
And we will still owe after that payment 204.16. 204.16. Now, often the questions will ask you, well, how much do they still owe? Well, obviously now we're outside of a discount period. So if we're outside of a discount period, we will owe dollar for dollar. So any money paid after November the 12th will just receive dollar for dollar credit. So we would have to remit after that 204.16. Be very careful when you do your exercises. Some of the questions are a little tricky. Some of them talk about a second payment, making a second payment that will reduce the balance to, and then they give a certain figure. Now that gets a little tricky and you really have to think it out. If it's reducing the balance to a certain figure, you'd have to figure out how much they got credited with on that payment. And then you'll work backwards into the formula to figure out how much they must have remitted. So just be careful. We can't cover everything on these little clips. But hopefully this is enough to get you started uh, and to gain an understanding of this topic. The topic is very important. I can guarantee you it will appear on final exams.